Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and welcome to a little later than usual Whip Wednesday episode number 121. I told y'all yesterday I'm going to be going live every single day this week to make sure that everybody, as many people as I can reach, know about my new online sewing course. We're going to be tackling the Jali pattern for 131. We talked about the French pronunciation yesterday. Not that great, although somebody French, I think, commented yesterday and said, you didn't do that bad. But it's the, we'll say it in English, Laurent, okay, pattern. Let's make sure that technology's on our side this happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. And let me check in the chat, make sure y'all can see me and hear me. If you are watching us either on Facebook or on YouTube, go ahead and put a little comment in the chat box and let me know where you're tuning in from. Let's see. Hi, Miss Lynette. I see Miss Bernadette from New Orleans is in the house. Yesterday was Mardi Gras. Awesome. Okay, great. Hi, Karina from Holland. Awesome. We got some European friends in the house. Eileen says, howdy neighbor. She lives here in North Central Florida near me. Miss Deborah from Port St. Lucie, Florida. We got some friends. Hi, Garnet, tuning in from Colorado. Rose from Maryland. Um, Colleen, tuning in from uh, Ontario. And Emmy from Australia. Welcome, everybody. So I hope I see some names on here that I already recognize from some of you that have, that have already signed up for my course. So if you have already signed up for the Jali, look at me turning the other side, this one, the cover sheet of the pattern, if you've already signed up, let us know in the chat box below so everybody can see that you will be participating in this new online video course. I'm going to do a quick overview of the class, of, of what you get in the course when you sign up, what projects we're going to be making, what lessons I'll be going over. Um, I have some fabric here. We'll talk a little bit about fabric stretch requirements because I we did already sell out of the fabric bundles that we had for this class. So I know some of you that may want to sign up for the course, I know that picking the right fabric for a project like this can be a little tricky, so I'll share with you a couple of samples and ideas that I have here. And then what else? Then I have my size selection worksheet, which is something that uh, all the students that are registered for the course can log into their student account, download, and I actually have a video lesson showing you how to fill it out. So I wanted to play around with kind of a little exercise today to show y'all how simple and straightforward it is. Of course, I go more into depth on this uh, in the video course, but just to give some of you who maybe are on the fence or have never signed up for one of my classes, just so you can get an idea of what we kind of cover in terms of teaching you how to take your body measurements, how to put the numbers into the selection worksheet, and then we use the pattern uh, size charts and measurements to select the closest size you know, to the one that we want to make or select a good size. So we're going to talk a little bit about that because there's a few different size charts that you need to reference. For those of you that are already registered for the course, remember that the first five videos of the 20 that are going to be in this video course have already been posted. Okay. So in this course, we are tackling t-shirts, both short sleeve and long sleeve. And it's kind of a boxy t-shirt style because the same pattern gives us a t-shirt and I'll pull one up here that I made for myself just so y'all get an idea. A boxy short sleeve tee like this. Okay. And a long sleeve tee, which Here's another sample of this is one that I made for my husband. It has the hood on it because we also make from the same pattern, y'all, a pullover that can be cropped regular length or a little bit longer with a hem band and a hoodie. So that's where I got the pattern pieces for the hood that I attached to his t-shirt here. So this is for my husband and I use the same pattern for myself. So it is for everybody, kids, teens, and adults, men and women. And let me bend down here. I dropped a couple of the little guy samples, the hard copy pattern. Okay. We're talking about the Jali pattern for one, three, one, the Laurent and this pattern, the hard copy pattern, you'll see if I open it up, this is good that we have this camera shot so they can kind of get an idea. So this pattern sheet is a whole sheet like this. Okay. And in this sheet, you will find 28 different pattern sizes, toddler size two to an adult size two X. Okay. And because it's for men and women, I'll give you the bust chest measurement. So you know, kind of what the two X is for. Usually when it's like a woman's pattern, it will say till size 24, but because this one is for everybody, it says, um, a chest measurement of 52 inches. So from a little kid size two, and I'll show you, cause I made a couple of little kid size two samples. How cute is this? And then another one that I made a little bit shorter. Okay. So this is the kid size two, all the way up to a bust or chest measurement of 52 inches come on that one pattern. Okay. So obviously we're not going to be cutting into it. 
Instead, I walk you through how to trace it off onto any translucent pattern tracing paper, medical examination paper, uh, newsprint, anything that you can kind of see through so that you can trace off the lines. And it sounds a little daunting to trace off the pattern pieces for people who are new, but trust me, it is worth it because I'll show you here. These are bags that I have with all the different pattern pieces for the sizes that I've traced off. So for example, these are the pieces for the little kitties size two that I made. So I just save them, okay? Anytime I wanna make the little tops again and I trace off the short sleeve and the long sleeve, so whenever I go to make one in that size again, I can give them as gifts, you know, any of my friends having babies and stuff like that, make them as gifts, put those pattern pieces right back in the baggie and store it away, okay? When the kids grow up, you know, if you're making these for your kids or grandkids, as they get older the next year, you just trace off the next size up or the next, you know, two size up or three size up. And so I have all the pattern here. The ones that I have traced off so far are size F, which is a toddler size two. I have size W, size Y, and size double A. So all of these, and I think the one I used for my husband on that t-shirt was size um, W which is, uh, it says adult medium. It's for a bust or chest measurement of 38 inches. And then the Y is one that I made for myself as a crop pullover that's like a little bit closer to the body because the fabric had a good amount of stretch and that one is for a bust of 40 inches, at 40 and one eighth inch, I should say. So because there are so many patterns, uh, or excuse me, so many sizes, this is the one that I did. So the hoodie that I'll show you in a minute, I made in size double A, which is... Uh, size large for a bust of 42 and a half. But this one I made two sizes smaller because the fabric has a ton of stretch and I made the cropped version for myself. So although you might be thinking, why would she make one size and then she sizes down two sizes and makes herself another one? Well, that is the beauty of making your own clothes, y'all. You pick the size based on how you want it to fit you and based on how much stretch and room that fabric is already going to provide to the finished garment. So that's the part that I feel like people get confused because I've already received several emails from people who are signed up for the class or are interested in signing up for this course and they ask me, hey, are you gonna cover um, uh, size differences or how to adjust the pattern for your size difference? And so I was thinking about this like, how come we never really run into those types of issues with these patterns? And I'll show you why. Because the pattern sheet itself includes 28 different sizes in one sheet, the increments, and let's go ahead and give them the over the shoulder camera shot here so they can see what I'm talking about. And I'll grab my knitting needle here for pointer, my little pointer tool. So you can kind of see these lines. This is the difference from all the sizes. So this is kid size two, and this is the largest size. So there's 28 sizes in here. Normally, if you are familiar with just a generic sewing pattern, you know, the big four or five companies, they don't include this many sizes, okay? They'll include maybe three, sometimes five, things like that. And so the jump in between the different pattern sizes is way bigger. And so those take, especially if you're working with maybe a woven fabric that doesn't stretch, you need to tweak and take measurements to make sure that it's gonna fit here, 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 and you know, the different parts of your body. Here, look at the, the, the tiny, tiny increments in the different pattern sizes. So you can imagine that if this pattern, and it does, requires, or at least they suggest, that you use a fabric that has minimum 15% stretch along the crosswise grain, meaning you need to have at least 15% stretch going this way around your body, okay? So if I use a fabric that has 100% stretch, that's a lot more than what is required. So automatically I know right off the bat that even if I make it in a size where a fabric with 15% stretch would fit me perfectly, if I change it and cut out the same size but with that fabric that has 100% stretch, it's gonna fit me bigger, right? Because if it stretches this way, gravity's gonna pull on it, so not only is it not gonna fit where a fabric with 15% stretch landed in terms of the hem, it's gonna be longer because it's stretching this way. The same goes for this way. It has so much more stretch that when I put it on, it's gonna be roomier because the fabric is stretching and I have more room built in. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. And so when we need to adjust to fit our specific measurements, one, the fabric stretches, so you already have more wiggle room because it's way more forgiving. And two, the size increments are so tiny in between that going down one or going up two more sizes is not gonna make that much of a difference, but it will allow you to kind of fine tune based on how much stretch that fabric has. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Because I thought about that and I'm thinking, a lot of people are asking about like, how are we gonna fine tune the pattern? There are so many sizes built in, you can pick one based on how you want it to fit. So in other words, 
I'll give an example. Let's say we, whoop, that camera went and then it kicked back on. Okay, that was weird. Um, <laughs> say you're working with a fabric that has 40% stretch, okay? And you make a sample top. You make yourself one of these. Say you make a t-shirt or you make one of these pullovers, okay? You make something like this. And you're like, oh, it fit me a little bit loose. I could probably stand to size down on the next one. Then say you make it again and you have a fabric that has the same amount of stretch, 40%, let's say, and it's a different fabric, one that you like, but it has the same amount of stretch. Well, now that you know that a fabric that had that same 40% stretch fit you a little bit loose, you can size down if you want it to fit you a little bit more snug. Or the opposite is true as well. If it fit you a little bit loose, but you want it to be a even more loose, what would you do? Size up one or two more sizes using a fabric that has that same amount of stretch to get the fit that you want. So when people ask, is the pattern true to size? It's like a non-question. You make it how you want it to fit to your size, right? Because sometimes people don't like to wear loose clothes. Some people like to wear loose clothes, right? And other people don't. So it depends on how you want it to fit. And that's the beauty of making your own clothes. You select what you want. All right, let's pop into the chat real quick. Yes, Andrea says, hi everyone. I signed up for the course last night. Great to hear it. I love it. Awesome. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, good. Becky says, I'm signed up. I'm excited. Lavana says, I'm also ready to roll. Oh, I love it. Thank y'all so much. I can't wait to see your finished makes. Now, let's go over um, stretch because we're talking a little bit about stretch. And uh, my husband doesn't know this, but he'll be happy to hear it because this fabric that I made him, this long sleeve t-shirt with the hood on, I was like, oh man, I don't have any more of this fabric, but guess what? I found it, Brandon, in a different color in my stash. I obviously used it for something in the past because <laughs> I have chunks cut out of it, but I have plenty here. It's like a bamboo rayon and poly spandex knit. That's light. It's like a t-shirt material, but it has a good weight and it's super soft. Okay. So let's go ahead and measure the stretch on this fabric because it stretches less than another fabric I have on hand. And I want to share this with y'all. So, you know, okay. If you are going to the fabric store, you sign up for my class. We're already out of fabric bundles. Sorry, y'all. Um, we sold out really quickly. Again, just a quick note. If you ever want to be the first to find out about my classes, kits, fabric bundles, and things like this, make sure that you're on my email newsletter list. Those are the first people that we email with all the stuff. So by the time y'all see me here live, it's gone, usually. Okay, this is a dark fabric. So let me, um, whoop, not darker. Okay. So it's like a rust color, like a dark burgundy rust color. So I can see that here's my selvage edge. This is the manufactured edge. Just look around the edges of the fabric if you're not familiar with what it is. Usually it'll have some color, some writing, or some little dots on it, okay? So that part we don't really want in our project, but it tells us which directions what is gonna go based on how you cut your pattern pieces. So if this is my selvage edge, I know that at the width, the other end of the width of the fabric, I have another selvage. And I know that selvage to selvage in this direction is going to be my degree degree of greatest stretch, the crosswise grain, if it was a woven fabric. Okay. So I'm going to pinch somewhere here, stay away from an edge. You get a better representation of the actual stretch here. So I pinch so that I grab two layers and then I'm going to just lay it flat on my cutting mat here. And I'm going to count out four boxes. So I'm going to pinch at the beginning of the first box. And then this is one, two, three, and four boxes without stretching yet. And I just pinch at the other end. In other words, without stretching, I have four inches worth of fabric in between my fingertips. Make sense? Great. So now I leave my left hand where it's at and I'm going to start stretching with my right. We talked about this and I have a video on my YouTube channel that I posted last week on how to measure stretch. So I'm just going to do this once or twice. For those of you that maybe missed it, you can check it out on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So the reason I do four inches is because it's easy for us to think four quarters equals one dollar. Okay. And four quarters, a quarter is one quarter, right? 25, 25%. So if I pinch here and here and I start to stretch, I'm taking the 100% chunk that I want to measure and I'm stretching it to see what it can stretch up to. So if I can stretch it one additional box, that means one quarter, 25%. Make sense? So I grab it here. I'm going to pull and I can make it to that next box. So that tells me this fabric has 25%. Now let's see if it can go more. I can tug it just a little bit more, but I can't quite make it to the end of the second box. So it's a little bit more than 25%, but not quite 50. So I would probably call this one 30% stretch along the crosswise grain. Now we check back to the pattern and the pattern tells us 
This is for stretch knits, which I have here. And it says 15% stretch is the requirement, minimum requirement in the width. So that's where I check the crosswise, okay? So 15% required and I have 30. Can I use this fabric to make the top? Absolutely. What does the 30% over 50 tell me? That it's gonna fit a little bit looser, okay? It, and, and now let's check the lengthwise grain the other way. So if this is my selvage, we just check this way, perpendicular to the selvage, okay? If I check the stretch percentage in this direction, parallel to the selvage, let's see what we get. So we come in a few inches, pinch two layers, lay it flat, grab your four inches without stretching first, and then we stretch. 25% and a little bit more. So this is a funny knit because I don't see these knits too often, but this one has about 30 and 30. So stretch is about the same in both directions. So this one is just going to fit a little bit looser the other direction, but not quite as much extra room as if I use the fabric that has 100% stretch, okay? So I need to use that to make him a new t-shirt. And then I'll grab another fabric here so we can do this test. Now this is cotton spandex. And for those of you that were trying to get some of the fabric bundles from us for this class, this was one of the fabrics we had for sale, super cute. It is an uh, Dear Stella print uh, called Caitlin. And we sold out of this. This is just a scrap piece, like an off cut that I have, and I'm gonna use it to make myself a t-shirt from this pattern. But you can see that on this one, this is cotton spandex. And I wanna say it's, it's either 95% cotton, 5% spandex, or 96% cotton and 4% spandex. But it's mostly cotton and then that extra stretch that is going to make it really good for us to make, you know, t-shirt, a long sleeve tee, whatever you want to do, pajamas, whatever. So this one, you can see this is the selvage edge, the manufactured edge. It looks totally different to what the print design is. These numbers here represent the different colors that are in the actual print. So if you're looking for a solid for the ribbing or for the neckline to match with it, this is really helpful because that way you can see, oh, navy would go really cute. You know, there's like some peach, some coral colors, a really pale pink, all of that. So you can use that as your key for the colors that are incorporated into the design print. Now, this is my selvage. So now let's go crosswise, right? Let's check perpendicular to the selvage, how much stretch we got. I'm gonna pinch it there. Without pinching it, I make sure that I just lay it flat on the four inches, and now I stretch. 25, 50, 75% stretch along the crosswise grain. So when we're talking about a pattern and when we're making a pattern like this one, in the video course that requires 15% stretch and I want to use this fabric that has 75% stretch along the crosswise grain, guess what? You don't really have to make your exact size based on your body measurements because this has so much more stretch, it's going to fit you a little bit looser. But it's a great kind of like sliding scale. I always recommend my students make, make one, just pick whatever cheap fabric you can get your hands on that meets the stretch requirements, go through the lessons, make one, try it out first. Once you have that first one done, it will be wearable, but now you will have a starting point and you'll know, okay, I cut out size double B for myself with this fabric that has 75% stretch along the crosswise grain. I know it fit me a little too loose. So now I know that if I'm using a cotton spandex knit like this that has the same amount of stretch, I may want to size down instead of a size double B, I could probably even go down to like an X or a Y, okay? But this is a little bit of guessing and I'm cool with guessing. For those of you that wanna be a little bit more precise in the actual size that you select, it's super easy. And of course, I cover all this in depth in my video course. I'm gonna bring out this size chart. Let me take out my worksheet here. Does anybody have their chest, waist, and hip measurement and they want me to run through an exercise here and walk through the charts and tell you, you know, what size I would recommend you make, say with a cotton spandex like that? Let's see. I'm gonna wait till somebody chimes in, but let me see if there's any other questions. Um, Janie says, this is measurement for going selvage to selvage. Yes, that's the width. So selvage to selvage is where you want to measure to make sure that that fabric has at least the 15% that the pattern calls for, okay? And y'all should not have a hard time finding a knit that has 15% along the crosswise grain. Most of them are going to have more than that. Like these ones that I showed you with the navy shirt and this one, it's rare for me to have a knit that has 30% stretch. I'm usually going for something way springier, the Liverpools, the bullet fabrics. If you're working with these double knits, sweater knits, they usually stretch a lot more than that, okay? Yeah, so Laura says, I like when it's looser for my kids who grow fast. They last a little longer. Exactly. And so when you're making your own clothes, you get to do that. 
right? Instead of guessing like, oh, I'm going to buy this one size bigger for my kid. And then you get home and you put it on and you're like, this thing should have been size three sizes smaller because it's way too small. You can choose how it's going to be. Okay. Hi, Janie. Great. I'm glad that that made sense for you. Great. Let's see. Oh, Windless Original says I have some fabric left over from my jean class, which was a pajama class that I teach. Um, and it should be enough for the short sleeve Laurent. That would be awesome. And actually, I have some like that, too, that I'm going to make the short sleeve ones out of. It's like not quite enough to make a long sleeve top, but just right to make a little boxy tee. All right. Oh, Tracy's saying that the pattern on our website says that it's on back order. Quick note, I sent this out in the email before I went live, but I wanted to let you all know here. Right before we went live, we sold out of the patterns. Yesterday, I told you all we have less than half left and they're gone, gone. We have ordered more. They will be here next week. Um, of course, they come from Canada. So we did set it to back order on the website. So if you're signing up right now for the course and you want to order the hard copy pattern from us, just add it to your order. And as soon as we get them, we'll start shipping out those back ordered copies. Okay. For any of you that would be like me, if I was signing up for a class, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to have my pattern in time. No worries, because there's a lot of videos that you need to watch before we even get into tracing and cutting out the pattern, okay? So a lot of it is this stuff, and these are PDFs that you can download before you even get your pattern in hand. So in other words, you can be watching these, taking your measurements, going through the charts, watching the video lessons. The first five videos are already posted to the student uh, account, and you can be going through, selecting what size you're going to do, check how much yardage you need, get your fabric. So there's no rush. It's not like we're starting right now. Okay. So y'all can or go ahead and order your pattern and we'll ship them out as soon as we get them next week. We've already, you know, it's already on, our, on its way to us. Okay. Great. Uh, let's see. Yes. Monique says, hi everyone. Glad that I could make a live. Vanessa breaks it down in the garment classes. Nothing is left out. And this is one pattern for the entire family. You're absolutely right. Okay. So now let's go through a, a, a thing. Oh, great. Jennifer Lee, thank you for suggesting or, um, volunteering your pat, your measurements. So let me draw lines here. She says bust 39 and a half waist 32 and hips 41. Oh, I love this. Okay. <laughs> so here's how I would do it for a place to start. Okay. Chest measurement is 39 and a half inches around the fullest part of her bust. Okay. When we look here on the Jali chart and, and y'all are getting a little, a little snippet class here from my course, because I can't have y'all jumping into tracing and cutting out the fabric without going through all of this. So like I said yesterday, really my classes, my garment classes, they're like a master class because I walk you through every step that you need to know before you can start hacking away at your fabric. Okay. <laughs> so I know some, a lot of you actually, I was going to say some, but a lot of you have said, I have so many stretch knit fabrics and I'm scared to cut into them to make clothes. Once you go through all this, you're going to feel confident to cut through and make a garment that fits. Okay. The pattern tells us choose the size closest to the chest measurement. Okay. Real quick to note. Um, let me see which one I can show y'all where it shows the biggest here on the pattern sheet. You will see the black and white line drawings that tell you what the pattern is like. The reason it's telling us choose the size closest to the chest measurement is because this pattern is straight up and down. And I think a good example is the little striped one I made, the little girl one with the pink, blue, and white. You can see it perfectly here. And I'm going to zoom out. This pattern is straight up and down. Okay. So what does that tell us who have curvier bodies where your, your bust measurement, your full bust might not be the biggest uh, circumference of your three measurements. Easy peasy. Okay. But let's start with this one because, um, the measurements we got here from Jen Lee are actually a great little example. Okay. So if the pattern tells us to choose the size closest to the chest measurement, we are going to go on this chart. Okay. Jolie has this broken down into two sections. I know it happens all the time to beginners. They look at this and they're like, what? I can't do this. <laughs> and then they just set it aside because they don't know how to read this chart. So that's part of my class. I teach you what everything means, how to read so that you can make the best decision in the size that you're going to make. It looks like this y'all because there's 28 sizes. Okay. If it had four sizes, it wouldn't look like this, but that's why we like these patterns. Okay. I sell dozens of Jolly patterns on my website in case you didn't know. They're awesome. Okay. And it's run by a French Canadian company out of Canada, a mom and daughter duo. They're super nice and I love their patterns. So here we go. This top box is children and teens. It goes from a kid size two to a kid size 13. Okay. 
The next box down here says body measurements adults. And it can be a little extra confusing, I think, because everything is in English and in French. Remember, it's a French Canadian company, so there's like twice as much info. The measurements for those of you that live overseas, guess what? This is not just for North Americans and Americans here. There's measurements on everything that has to do with this pattern in metric and imperial. They're the bomb. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. So we are going with Jennifer Lee's measurement of 39 and a half inches at her chest. So here's what I do. I here's chest, here's waist, and here is hips. Okay. We're going on chest and I'm going to keep going over till I see 39 and a half, the closest thing I can get to it. So I see 39 and one eighth. And then the next size up is for a 40 inch and one eighth inch bust. So which one is the closest? 39 and one eighth is pretty close to 39 and a half. So that puts her at size X. Okay. We're just going to write that down for now. Jolly size X. Okay. Jolly size X at the chest measurement. If we select that, then I'm just going to go down and check the waist and hip measurement to see if her, the rest of her measurements are somewhat close. Okay. The waist measurement for that size X is for somebody who has a 39 and an eighth inch bust, which she's super close to that. The waist measurement is at 33 and five eighths and her waist is 32. So we know it's not going to fit her small, right? Because this is, uh, for accommodating a waist that's bigger than her. So, so far we're good, good. And we say, okay, she could probably make the X. The hip measurement is for someone who has a hip measurement of 39 and three eighths and hers is 41. So her hips are a little bit bigger than this one, but still close enough that mm, I'm pretty sure she'll be able to get away with it. Even if she used a fabric that had 15% stretch, but now you don't have to guess for those of you that are super precise and are freaking out like, no, it's going to fit her too small in her hips when she puts it on. What if she uses fabric that has 15% stretch? Here's where the other chart comes in. So, so far me with my experience, I would say, Jen, you're probably okay to make a size X. Okay. But let's get a little more accurate. We have another chart here. This is the bomb because not all pattern companies will give you this finished measurements. This is for body measurements where you apply your body measurements and come in here to find what size Jolly recommends based on how they design the pattern, right? I don't have to follow their recommendation, right? As you saw in all my samples, none of these fabrics have 15% stretch. I made them all with fabric that had more. So you do have that ability to customize these patterns and these things for yourself. What they do is provide a suggestion based on how they design the pattern, how they expect it to fit on people's bodies. And I can choose to go with that, make it bigger, make it less. You are choosing. So here's what we do next. So I said, Jen can probably make a size X easily, even with a fabric that had 50% stretch, a hundred percent stretch It's going to fit her a little bit bigger. Fine. I want to double check and make sure, Hey, hold on. This fabric costs me $20 a yard. Let me make sure before I start hacking into my fabric that it will be able to fit over my hips, right? Cause she said her hips were 41 inches. Let's just triple check. Here's what we do. We said size X. On the finished measurement chart, we come in here. Okay. Your sizes are listed along the left side. And then we have five columns, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five corresponds to the numbers as these red lines are listed on these finished garments. Okay. So Jen, if you are still on, let me know what look you would like to make t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, the hoodie, or a crop pullover or a pullover. Okay. I'm going to wait to see what she says. Let me take a sip of water because that's going to matter. Why is it going to matter? I'm trying to double check the finished width measurement. If she's planning to make one, that's going to go down to her hips, right? If she tells me a crop t-shirt, I ain't too worried about the hips because the shirt is going to be shorter than her hip measurement. So as long as it fits and it's going to be bigger than her bust and waist, guess what? A big thumbs up. She going to be able to make it just fine. Okay. So Jennifer Lee says the hoodie. Okay. Thank you. Perfect example. Thanks Jen. Okay. So we're going to make the hoodie right here. And so first we need, um, size two or excuse me, number two, we're going to check the chest measurement. Number two is here, but it applies to all of them, right? Because the chest, that front and back piece, is going on all the looks. All right. So two, we're going to chest. I'm going to come down to size X that I told Jen to make and see what is the finished chest measurement of that top 
of that hoodie. If she cuts out the Jali pieces, so now let me paint you the picture. This is the finished measurement of the hoodie in the chest area. If Jen cuts out size X, all the size X pattern pieces from the big pattern piece of the pattern, and she uses a fabric that has 15% stretch. Do we understand how that applies? If you follow the Jali pattern that corresponds to your chest measurement, that's what we selected it by, and you're using the fabric they suggest, the hoodie is going to measure around the chest 44 and three quarters. Okay? And we said that Jen's bust was 39 and a half. Is that going to fit her? Yes. So here's now what you do. So 39 and a half, we got 40 and a half, 41 and a half, 42 and a half, 43 and a half, 44 and a half, and a little bit more. So Jen, are you okay with the hoodie finishing five and a quarter inches of extra room, ease, fabric ease around the bust area? So if she cuts size X and uses a fabric that has 15% stretch, it is going to, and she uses the right seam allowances, right? You're eating up the correct amount that's called for quarter inch seams in this pattern. You're going to end up with an extra five and a quarter inches of room around your bust. Okay. This is how you double check. If you're just checking to make sure it's going to fit loose enough, then you know, okay, that's not bad. Now we check the full length here. If you are a petite person, if you have a short torso, if you have a long torso, this measurement number four here, you might want to check it either against your body or against the garment you have in your closet. So let's check for the length. I don't know how tall you are, Jen, but we'll see. Size X, and I come across here to column four, telling me that from the top of the shoulder to the bottom hem of the hoodie, if she makes it just like the pattern pieces come with the hem band, it's going to measure 29 and a quarter inches. Okay. So you can check those measurements. All This is the finished measurement for each size. If you use a fabric that has 15% stretch. So guess what, Jen, if you want to make that hoodie out of a fabric that has 50% stretch, what do you already know? Are you still going to end up with five and a quarter extra inches of ease around your bust? No, you're going to end up with more, right? So for those of you that are like five and a quarter inches, that's way too loose. Guess what you do? You figure out how much ease you want. So say Jen's chest is 39 and a half, like she said, but she thinks, you know what? I have a hoodie that fits me really good. I measured it and it's only 42 inches around. Okay. And I want to make another one that fits me just like that. So 42 inches, what do we do? Instead of going with the size that we selected based on our body measurements, we select the size based on the finished garment measurement. So what do I do? I'm going to come here on the chest circumference and I'm going to go down, down, down until I see 42. And guess what, Jen? I found 42 and a quarter and it's telling you to make size V. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, but over here with my chest measurement, it told me to make um, a size X. That's two sizes smaller than that. That is based on the suggestion of the pattern company based on how they want it to fit. So you already see that, and this is something that y'all can do. If you know what size you're going to make here, jump over to finished garment measurements, and that will tell you how much ease this garment is going to uh, be, like how much ease you're going to get extra. So you can make it fit snugger or looser, depending on which one you're choosing. Okay. And then still always remember, uh, that if you're using a fabric that has way more stretch, that's going to affect too. Okay. Um, oh, she says she's five foot tall. She says, haha, I'm five feet. Okay. Well, maybe <laughs> you don't want to use that full length. And so this is great because at this point, if, uh, where are we? Column four, <laughs> the length of that hoodie is going to be 29 and a quarter inches. If you measure 29 and a quarter, you're like, whoo, that's to my knees. Guess what? In the pattern, we have cut lines that are delineated right there for you that says cut here to make it shorter. And so when we get to tracing out and cutting out the pattern, I will show y'all in the course exactly where that is. So for you, Jen, I would suggest if you're going to make the hoodie, say you have another hoodie, measure that hoodie from the top of the shoulder seam to the bottom of the hem. And then you decide, okay, this is the length that I want mine at. And you cut yours to make it be that finished length. So it is a lot. It can feel overwhelming for those of you that are beginners, but trust and believe that I walk you through every single step so that you can customize it and make it right. Okay. Diane is asking, could you use a serger to sew this together? Absolutely. And for those of you that are new to my online sewing courses, I actually teach the entire course. All the video lessons will be on how to make these projects 
the t-shirt, short sleeve or long sleeve, the hoodie, the pullover, okay, all these projects, and I'm teaching you how to make all of them. I teach you how to make them just with a regular home sewing machine, but I always add bonus videos showing you how you would make it with a serger and how you would hem it with a cover stitch machine. So that for those of you that either want to see what those machines do so that maybe you can invest down the line if you're really getting into garment sewing, or for those of you that have a serger or a cover stitch in a box or a closet, you can take it out and see how you could use it to finish off these projects. Okay. All right. Awesome. Oh, Laura says, and I recommend using the cut here line. She says, I forgot making my first pair of jean pajama pants and it makes a difference. It does. If you know that, right? For people that have like short arms, they have a hard time finding long sleeve shirts that are not super long. This is, you're able to customize all of this. But also I don't want you to get bogged down like, oh my gosh, I have to make 17 different decisions to just make the top. You don't have to. I recommend you make one flat out. Do it simple. You jot down your bust measurement, you see the pattern they suggest, and you don't even have to go to the finished garment measurements, just make it once. That way you know from beginning to end what it takes, the tracing, the cutting, the fabric prep, putting it all together. And then you can see, hey, guess what? This is pretty wearable. Now that I know how it goes from beginning to end, let's make it a little bit better. Let me use my better fabric and let me fine tune a little bit more the length of the sleeves, whether I'm doing a hem band or not, the hoodie, all this kind of stuff, okay? So hopefully that little mini lesson right there helped y'all. Of course, I go into depth and I cover the same, you know, going over everything that I went over here to help y'all select the best pattern choice for the, you know, pattern size and the fabric that you're using in my video course. So if you want to sign up, quick note, the course is $67 right now. Today's Wednesday, Valentine's Day. Monday, the 19th, this coming Monday at midnight, the price jumps up 40 more bucks. So it's going to be $107 from now on out. It will never be this price again. Um, even if I do sales in the future, they will never get close to $67. I always keep the lowest price point to my early bird sale. Uh, as my early bird sale, I send it on my email newsletter. I post it on social media and I share it with y'all here on these lives. So if you're catching us live, know that the 67 bucks is the lowest this class will ever be. You get all the step-by-step -step video lessons, we drip them out. We have a course calendar that you can check out. It tells you exactly what date and time the different batches of videos will be posted. We also have live question and answer sessions. This class is gonna have two of them. You can pre-submit your questions, meaning watch the class, watch the videos, and if you have a question before you kind of dive in and get into it, submit your question. I will answer it live with y'all, and that live will not be a live like this. This is only a live that's private to the students of the class, so I answer them there. One's going to be this month, and then the second live is going to be the first weekend in March, okay? So you can download this calendar right now. That way you can check it out and see, you know, if it works with your schedule. I have several people that have already signed up, and they told me, hey, I can't get to it to March or April, and they already know my classes. They're returning students. The class never expires. Once you purchase any of my classes, it's yours indefinitely, okay? So let's see. Oh, thank you, Susie. She says, Vanessa's an amazing teacher. Awesome. Amanda says, this has helped so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Jennifer Lee, awesome. She says, that was so helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me your body measurements. That was great. Um, I think I saw another measurement, and I'm going to do one right quick. I won't go as in depth, but just to walk y'all through Rachel. Okay. Rachel's giving us her body measurements. Let's jot these guys down. We have a bust of 39. Oh, it was about the same. Um, waist measurements of 37 and hips of 38. So we already know that, but the bust of 39 is probably going to put you at size X. Yep. It's going to put you also Rachel at size X. And then we know already because we checked the finished measurement chart that the uh, ease is going to be five and a quarter inches. And so even with your hip measurement of 38, you're going to be good and covered. And that's if you use a fabric that has 15% stretch. Like I said, that's pretty rare to find a fabric that only has 15% stretch in the crosswise grain. So if you use one that has 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you're going to be swimming in it. Like it's, it's going to be even bigger. So you could do a W, you could do a size V. If you want it even looser, you can go up one size. You have plenty of options there. Okay, but it's pretty straightforward on how to do it. Yes, Windless Original says the finished measurements is so helpful. It is huge. And the fact that they give it to us for everything, the short sleeve, the chest and bust measurement, uh, the length of the full sleeve, the full length of the one that has the hem band, and the finished length of the garment that is cropped. You could totally customize this thing, okay? If, for example... If you like the cropped length, say you're very petite or you have a really short torso or you just have a teenager that wants to have their belly button out, if you don't want to add the hem band, 
guess what you do? You cut it like it's going to be cropped and you just turn under the cropped edge and you'll have it hemmed even shorter. So you are in complete, complete control of this garment. Okay. You can make it as custom as you want, or you can keep it as simple as I just did. All the samples that I've been showing y'all, we're just making it straight from the pattern pieces. So go ahead and put them on the front, my front camera shot. I'm going to show these samples again, just in case we have anybody tuning in. And if you are, you, you need to get the pattern, the, the hard copy pattern for this is a Jali pattern. Uh, let me grab this. It comes in a big sheet like this. We're currently out of stock, but we have more on order. So you can still order them on our site. It's going to say back ordered, but as soon as we get the patterns in from Canada, should be early next week. Once we get them, we'll ship those orders out super quickly. Okay. So this is the full length without the hem band in the toddler size too. I just cut the measurement off the pattern and turned it under and hemmed it. Okay. Easy peasy. All right. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate y'all, um, positive comments and testimonials. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks Jamie. All right. So that was the little kids. When you can see this one is shorter. I didn't have enough of this fabric to make it longer or to add a hem band. So I just made it shorter and hemmed it. This is not exactly the cropped size, uh, but it's a little bit longer than cropped, but hemmed without the hem band. Make sense? And then the t-shirt. Now this fabric has a ton of stretch in it. That's why it fits me kind of a little bit looser. I cut this a size double A. The fabric has way more stretch than 15%. So it fits me loose, boxy, breezy, but still super comfy. Okay. So again, I didn't make any modifications to all these samples. This is the one that I made for my husband using the same pattern. Hello. If you have boys, girls, kids, adults, grownups, teenagers, sons, grandkids, great grandkids with the one pattern, it's $17 on our site with the one course at $67, you could literally crank out dozens of garments for everybody from age two to size two X. Oh, real quick. Forgot to mention the pattern includes those sizes, size two toddler, size two up to an adult size 2X with a bust measurement of, I think it was 52 inches. But if you need a larger size than the 2X, Jali sells a PDF only version that you can purchase directly from their website that includes some of the sizes that the hard copy pattern has. So it starts off, I want to say it starts off with DD or double E, one of these guys here, or look at me. It starts off with like, it includes, I think the last three or four of the biggest sizes on the hard copy pattern, and it goes up to five X. So if you have a bust measurement that's larger than 50 inches and goes up to 64 inches, you can make this. You just buy the PDF from them, print out the PDF pages based on, you know, the size that you need to make. Oh, it's right here. Um, yeah, duh. This, I had, I have the, the one X to five X pattern, uh, sizes here. So the PDF only includes 1X to 5X, only those adult sizes, and it goes from a chest measurement of 46 and an eighth to 64 inches. So they have a huge size range. This is literally for everybody. And if you don't know how to do it, you need help because there's a lot of info and the steps and the fabric, $67 for my class. You wouldn't even be able to pay $67 if you went in person to take this class. And if you did, you maybe would only make one of the looks like the t-shirt, the quickest thing, and it would take like all day. With my video lessons, they never expire. So whenever you log in and want to watch a couple videos, do it, right? They're there for you to watch at any time. Just know the first five videos are posted now. In my classes, I tend to drip out the content. So make sure to download that course calendar so that you see exactly when the classes will, or the batches of videos will be posted. But everything will be up. Uh, the last videos go up March 1st. So in the next couple weeks, you know, watch the videos that are there now get your fabric, get your pattern, that kind of stuff. Watch those prep videos so you can be taking measurements, selecting your size, making sure the fabric has more stretch than what is required and all that kind of stuff before you get going. Oh, Susie says, I'm going to start now on Christmas gifts. I'm telling you, just make sure you make them so that by the time they grow, because I know you got grandbabies, by the time they grow by Christmas, it'll still fit them. <laughs> Amanda says, the price is phenomenal. I agree. And we've tried to keep our prices the same for years because I know the cost, I mean, the cost of the patterns have gone up. The cost of fabric has gone up. Thread, need, I mean, everything has gone up. So because I want y'all to have successful results, I'm trying to keep these classes at the same price. Okay. Let me, oh, I haven't showed y'all the other ones. So this is one of the pullovers I made. You see the full length with the hem band. So this is significantly longer than the cropped version that I made. So same pattern, same size, and two totally different looks right? Doo, doo, doo. 
actually, I, I said same size. It's not same size. So this is size double A and this is size Y. <laughs> because I wanted it a little bit more snug since it's kind of cropped, but it looks cropped. Like you would think my belly button is out, but I have a short torso. So it actually covers the button on my jeans. So for me, this just fits more like a tunic length one that goes down like to the middle, not the middle, middle of my thigh, but kind of like past my upper thigh. And then this one fits me just like, you know, if you're wearing some cute skinny jeans and you want to show off your lower half, this still covers fully my belly and covers the jeans because I have a short torso. So you can play around with that length. If you want it crop, crop, you can really, really make it cropped. Okay. And then the hoodie, because I think the most people probably are signing up because they want to make this hoodie. <laughs> I made this hoodie using just fleece. This is anti-pill fleece or blizzard fleece from Joann's. Cheap stuff. Okay. Hoodie with the kangaroo pocket. Again, the fact that with this one pattern, let's set aside the rest of that stuff. You will learn how to make a hoodie like this from size two to size five X if you need it. <laughs> I mean, it's wild. Okay. And this is um, size double A. So these ones, of course, the, the, the fleece has more stretch than the pattern calls for. So it fits even roomier. And I like that, right? Because this is outerwear. You, if you're going to be wearing a hoodie like this, unless you're a teenager, you likely will have layers underneath. So you don't want it to be super snug on your body. You want to be able to, you know, comfortably accommodate the layers that you're going to have underneath it. So again, you would check the finished measurement, go by the finished measurement and see how big it's going to fit you on what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Some of y'all are super stoked about the hoodie. That's awesome. Um, Kareen says, does the kangaroo pocket only work with a hem band? So I was looking at that on the pattern and I haven't tried to make a, um, an option where you hem it under. I, th I guess you can, it would just be a little bit bulkier there at the bottom because the kangaroo pocket gets placed right to the bottom edge of the front bodice. Oh, look at me. Can you give them the other camera shot, please? Let me show you on here. Oh Lordy, this is so, 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 so dark. The lighting is all off with these cameras. But anyway, we're going to leave it like that for now, but you can see it's super dark and it's also nighttime here. I don't usually go live anymore on nighttime, so I don't have any extra lighting set up. So I apologize for that. But the kangaroo pocket gets sewn to the bottom edge of this bodice piece. So it has you attach the hem band. Technically, I guess you could turn it under. It's just going to be a little bit more bulky here down at the bottom, you know, because this would be like if the hem band doesn't exist and you can just turn that edge under and top stitch it. So it won't really affect the pocket itself because you do have some extra room here. Okay. So you could technically do that if you wanted to. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think that's going to be it. I hope that I helped y'all. Oh, you know what I wanted to share with you was a quick tip. This is a tip because we are sold out of our pattern tracing paper. Where did I put it? The big rolls that we had, I talked about them last week. Where did I put it? Did it fall on the other side of that table? Oh, I have it over here. Just kidding. I put it where it actually belongs. <laughs> Look at me. Okay. So my big pattern rolls, these are Bozel Creative Pattern. We're sold out. So, um, I know some of y'all are on the wait list for it yet. We haven't yet placed an order to get this because we usually order a bunch of stuff from Bozel at once, but if you cannot get something like this, I had talked about this because it's 46 inches wide. So when I'm making patterns that have large pattern pieces or pants or dresses where the template, you know, the pattern template piece is long and big, I don't want to be taping a bunch of pages together or splitting the pattern pieces into chunks. But in a pinch, you can use a 50% coupon or whatever you can get at Joann's and get yourself a sew-in interfacing. Sew-in, not fusible, sew-in light, medium weight, whatever, that is still somewhat translucent. And you can use that to cut your pattern pieces, to use it as pattern tracing paper. It's going to be thick, you know, like it has more body, but I'll show you before I was able to grab one of these from our shop spot there, I traced it out on my interfacing and the pattern pieces are great because they're super sturdy. They hold up good. If you needed to pin them to stuff, you could. So if you have, and you don't have to buy the bolts, but you know, I buy the bolts of everything, but 
you could do that and use that as your pattern tracing paper because sometimes the really fine ones like the medical examination paper, it's great because it's super sheer. You can see the lines right through it to trace your pattern pieces out with, um, but they also break pretty easily. So be careful with that. So just a quick tip that I wanted to share with y'all uh, about using um, a sew-in stabilizer. This is just as 40W. It's a Pellon product. It's 100% polyester and it is uh, crafts and home decor stabilizers. Doo -doo. Okay. So that's something else in case y'all need uh, to find something else, you know, to trace your pattern pieces out. Okay, great. Oh, good. Yeah, you could use freezer paper too. The only thing with some of those other options is that, you know, the width is not that big. And it's another reason this one ended up working well for this project because the pieces are not that big. Um, most of these stabilizers are going to come like this 20 inches wide. Okay. But even for the sleeves, instead of cutting it this way, you know, tracing it vertically, you just, if you buy the bolt or you get a good bit of yardage, you can just cut it the other way. Okay. All right. Okay. So great. Thank you all so much for the great questions. And for those of you that uh, submitted some of your body measurements so we can go through that little exercise, I hope that helped. And if any of you want to sign up for this class, make sure you do it before Monday because the price goes up to $107. It's 67 bucks right now. And remember that we are sold out of the patterns, but they're on back order. So just go ahead and order it on the site. And as soon as they come in, we will ship them out to you. All right. Those of you that are already registered for the course, go ahead and log in. The first five videos are there. All these PDFs are there for you to download. Your size selection worksheet, the one that we just went over, is there for you to also start you know, taking your measurements, the videos on how to take your measurements, how much fabric yardage do you need, those videos are already posted for you to access and get started with all the background work, okay? So thank you everybody for tuning in. Have a happy rest of your Valentine's Day and I will see y'all tomorrow because I told you I'm gonna go live every day this week. <laughs> I haven't decided what time yet. I'm trying to go live at like different time slots. So if you sign up for the class, when you get my email, join us for the live because we love to hear from you. And, um, I'm going to do something else tomorrow, but still, you know, spreading the word about my new class and I hope to see y'all there. So thanks again. Have a good night and I will see y'all tomorrow sometime.